In this video, what I want to do is walk you through a very quick overview of the various lymph node stations in the abdomen. For more educational resources and like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. Now before we get started, I just want to show you a quick diagram for the lymph node stations in the abdomen. There's both an the upper abdomen and a lower abdomen. I'm not going to go through all of these because as you can see, there's so many different lymph nodes. These are all different numbers for all the different stations that there are. I think that that is not as important. It's more important about just knowing in general where things are and also where the lymph nodes go. So if you see, everything kind of follows the vasculature. And that's the case for all the lymph nodes, most of the lymph nodes in the abdomen, I wouldn't say all of it, but a lot of the lymph nodes in the abdomen, the big ones that you're gonna be looking for are gonna be along the vasculature. So you're gonna be following your aorta, you're gonna be following the bifurcation into the iliacs, and that's really where you're gonna be seeing the majority of the lymph node stations. The thing that's important here is just to know kind of where in general these are located and how you describe them is really just in relation to the organs. So we have our liver, we have our stomach, our spleen, and this is going to be, the blue one's going to be our IVC, and then the red one's going to be our aorta. And so when you have lymph node stations in this area, what that's going to be is our gastrohepatic lymph node station. This is our gastrosplenic lymph node station. This is going to be our aortocaval lymph node station. So the, the stations that are between our aorta and our IVC, our inferior vita cava. So that's where they're getting the aorta caval. Then we can have our portocaval. So that's going to be right here around this area. It's going to be between our portal veins and our portal system and our inferior vena cava. Then we're going to have our portal hepatis uh, lymph node stations that are going to be around the obviously the, the port of hepatis. Next thing when we scroll down is we're going to have some more and you know there's different names for all of these uh, stations really what you can just call them is retroperitoneal lymph nodes right these are going to be your retroperitoneal lymph nodes obviously that's not the exact name for them but there's just many different types and for the most part they, it doesn't really matter right and so it's just in general these are going to be your retroperitoneal lymph nodes the ones that are going to be around either your aorta or your IVC and then the abdomen and then you're going to go in and you're going to track along your common iliac your external and your internal iliac and along the pelvic sidewalls and I'll show you those through CT. So here we have a CT of the abdomen and this is a case from casestacks.com. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want more practice with their cases but essentially what I'm going to show you is so this is a case where I mean you obviously have a large hepatic abscess but that's not the important part. What I want to show you is all the different lymph node stations. So in general, you're probably not going to see very many lymph nodes in a general sense, in a normal situation. In this one, we see a few small ones that are probably just reactive. But in general, what you're going to be looking for, this is going to be our gash. Well, first off, this is our liver. This is our stomach. This is our spleen. This is kind of the, the region of our, this is our portal vein. So the portal hepatis, our splenic vein. This is going to be our IVC. This is going to be our aorta. And then when we bifurcate, we're going to go into the common iliacs and then our external. And then we come back. And this is going to be our internal down here. And, you know, we lose some of it because of atherosclerosis and whatnot, which is all fine. So first thing is going to be that gastrohepatic lymph node station. So we see maybe... These are a few gastrohepatic lymph nodes, nothing that are abnormal, but those are some gastrohepatic lymph nodes. And when you're looking for lymph nodes, really, right, they almost look like vessels, but then when you scroll through them, they're going to disappear, right? So in vessels, you'll be able to follow. So those are going to be our gastrohepatic lymph nodes here in the region of our gastrosplenic. We don't really see many lymph nodes. That's going to be a splenule. Um, we also have peripancreatic, so anything around the pancreas is going to be some more lymph node stations. Our portahepatis, so we're going to have a few of these little portahepatis uh, lymph nodes. We also have portocaval lymph node stations, so let me just find it right here. So if we scroll here, this is our IVC, and it's a little bit decompressed here, but it's, it's that guy right there. So anywhere in this region is going to be our portocaval lymph nodes, and we don't really see too many in that region. We're going to scroll down, and between is going to be our aorto and our cava. 
so aortic cable lymph node stations. And this one you can call left periaortic. You can call this just retroperitoneal. All these guys right here are going to be little lymph nodes. So that comes in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. So those are all going to be some uh, lymph nodes, right? It's very easy to get them confused with vessels, but just know that's kind of the general sense. So here's some small lymph nodes. Those could be like periaortic lymph nodes. Again, the naming of it is not as important as uh, maybe when if you're a surgeon and you need to know exactly where they are and you're going to go in there and operate. Sure, that may be more important. But in general, when you describe them and then the surgeon's going to go in, feel around that location, they're not going to know exactly where it is. But just in general, that's why we're using these station names based off of where they're around. So they'll find the pancreas and it's a parapancreatic lymph node. So it's going to be somewhere around the pancreas. A gastrohepatic is going to be somewhere between the gastrohepatic along the gastrohepatic ligament um, is where they're going to be looking. Right. So when we come down, there's a few small lymph nodes again. Uh, we're going to come down and we're going to look along the common iliac and it's going to bifurcate into the external iliac and into our inguinal lymph nodes. Again, we see a few small ones and these are nothing to be concerned about. In the inguinal, I usually use the cutoff of 1.5 centimeters. In the general, in the abdomen, it's going to be one centimeter. And there's some variations to each of those. So this is going to be our internal iliac. And then we're going to, while we're looking at the internal iliac, we're going to look along the pelvic sidewall, especially patients with either prostate cancer, with uterine cancer. So, so here are some small lymph nodes as well that we see along the pelvic sidewall. We're going to do the same thing, you know, obviously on the left and the right. Oftentimes, these patients with prostate cancer, they may have these, you know, rectal nodules or patients with rectal cancer as well are going to have these lymph nodes as well. So the other thing that you want to note is that there's lymph nodes all along the mesentery and the momentum. When you have a situation, for example, you have a patient who has a colon cancer, you're going to want to look very carefully all around the colon for those lymph nodes because typically it's quite abnormal to have these lymph nodes around, <clears throat> large lymph nodes at least, around the colon, or around the rectum, or, or things like that. You may have these lymph nodes around the retroperitoneal lymph nodes a little bit more commonly, but you typically don't have them around the colon around bowel, unless you have some type of abnormality. It can be reactive, but it can also be some type of metastatic spread. So that's one thing you always have to look at whenever you're looking at, the, you know, a patient has a known colon cancer from colonoscopy and you want to figure out, has it spread anywhere? Where you're going to look specifically around as well as where these lymph nodes spread because some of them spread by, um, you know, in different modalities. So they're more typically going to be having them in different locations. Um, so this is kind of a very broad overview of lymph node stations. I'll have one on the chest as well, but really the, it's more about just naming them in a convention that makes sense to you. The names themselves are less critical. It's more so in how you describe them uh, because you're going to be giving locations for everything or when you talk to a, a you know a radiologist or you talk to a clinician, um, you're just going to be kind of talking them in general sense and then you can kind of point them out. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HMP notebook and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.